our adventure at Leica continues. And it's been quite a day so far. We've had the opportunity to watch how lenses are made. We've seen cameras made. We've learned an awful lot. And I'm very happy to be here right now with Tommy Stankovich. Did I say that correctly, sir? That is correct. Pleasure to meet you. Okay. And Tommy's in charge of everything. He's director of operations. And uh, you have how many people under you? 200. 200 people. And they're primarily the folks that put the cameras and lenses together and ship everything out. That's so it's kind of like everything you know, on that side is what you're in charge of. But there's a story here that I want Tommy to tell, because I've had the chance to sit with him for quite a while, and we've had a great conversation. And the one thing I find really cool about Leica is that it's all about the people. Everybody we've met in this company has been with this company seemingly forever. I mean, they've had apprenticeships in this company, and you know, there's fathers and sons and daughters that are following in, in footsteps. And one of the toughest parts is obviously putting all these things together, manufacturing, and keeping it all moving forward. And that's what Tommy does, and he does such a cool job. I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about it. So first off, what we see behind us is part of the manufacturing facility. This is part of your baby. And tell us a little bit more about how you keep it running. And also the, the fact that this is just not the only location. Yes, I will, Kevin. So um, as you said, we have about 200 people. Uh, working here in production and about 140 are in assembly. So we have a lens assembly and we have a camera assembly, which is what we see here. And about um, 60 people are in optics manufacturing, which is also what, what you have seen. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> and um, so in, in our camera assembly, if you have a look, on the one hand, you, you will see many, many working places where actually we, we have people uh, assembling our, our cameras. And we also have a lot of metrology inside and a lot of digitalization, I would say. Right. But um, we bring in digitalization to help, to help people, to support the people. The final decision is typically made by, by our people, by our experienced people. And you mentioned apprenticeships. Yes, uh, it's true in Germany we have a typically three, sometimes three and a half year apprenticeship. For, um, for mechanical jobs, also for jobs in optics. And especially in our optics department, the, the percentage of people is nearly 90% who have an apprenticeship. In assembly, it's lower. Um, in assembly, we have a number of such uh, people, yes. but we also have a, a large percentage of people who just qualify uh, for the job because of their, the sensitivity that they have in, in their hands the motorics. Yeah, we call it dexterity, motorics, but okay. what uh, Tommy's talking about is the ability to handle small pieces and work with fine pieces, the tiny screws and you know, the little pieces that go into making the, you know, a, a camera typically. So yes. you've, done, you've got people that are just so finessed with that. Uh, watching it close up, I just can't believe what they do on a regular basis. Yes, and, and maybe, maybe you, you saw that, that typically uh, those people are 90% women that work in our assembly lines because just their ability to work with such small things is, is better. So on the assembly line for cameras, you've yes. got 80% women, yes. but we didn't see that ratio back with the lenses. So what's the That's difference correct. there? The difference there is um, with the lenses, uh, you work a lot with metrology. You work a lot with uh, com computerization and uh, with a the tools that, that you saw there. And for some work that is, you also need strength. Um, there are a couple of working places sure. I, I can show you. And there it's just, um, we have men and women, and maybe it's about 60, 40, or, or yeah, two third, one third, more men. Well, also I think one of the differences, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as you have one area that's assembly, where all the pieces and elements they to put in a, a I like it together, come together and you know it moves down like this little line and you know you can see in some of the other videos we have. Mm -hmm. um, so people are picking up the pieces, they're putting a piece on then it you know gets in a box and moves down to the next person they put something else on. Where in optics and manufacturing mm -hmm. it's different because you're taking something that is not done yet and you know carving something out whether it's a piece of glass or metal or anything along that line. 
So it's a totally different side of things. So you, you've got both aspects to handle. We have both aspects to handle. And now what, what you're mentioning, I just, just can give you an example. In our camera assembly line, the way how we organize production, it's always, it's a, it's a function of complexity and volume. Meaning that uh, in the M digital line, um, we have working places, it's a line production, right. about 20 working places, and each person, as you described, does a piece of, of the job. Uh, a complete difference is the analog line. We still produce analog cameras, lo much lower quantities, yep. uh, increasing, however, which is an interesting I mean, it's trend. It's having a comeback. Yes, That's a topic a comeback. for another story. It's a, it's a different <laughs> topic. But there, basically, we have one person yep. uh, assembling the camera from the beginning till the end. So they have all the pieces. They have and, all the pieces, they, they have just... all the knowledge, it's small quantity, they have a lot of experience. This is the, it's the part that it takes most time to train a person to assemble an analog camera. Wow, so you've also got individual cameras. You, know, you have specialty Leica cameras yes. and you have to fit that into the line too. How do you keep it all together? Yes, um, what you say is correct. We really have a demand for individualized products, uh, which can be smaller quantities of 30, 40 pieces of the same product, but also going down to individual ones that are really unique uh, in the M a la carte program, for example, and this, this truly presents a challenge for an assembly. Um, and for, as an example, on the, our M digital line, each day on one working place, you will have about 10 different camera models being made there. Wow, really? So, really, and it, it, a, it, it's a challenge uh, as it is for the, for the assembly line, for, the, for the, all the tools that you use, it is also a challenge for the people. And so cross-training our people is a, is, a, is a big topic for us. Within an assembly line, but also between assembly lines, which is again a different, a different topic because we have typically very high demand for a product in the beginning of the life cycle. So we try to, to make production very high in the first months. I see, so what you've got is you know, if you've got this line with 20 people, one person can move to another spot or if somebody's not here today, they can take over another position somewhere else. So you've, you're doing a lot of, of cross training so that you've got more talented people and you know, they're not, not focusing on one thing then. Um, we truly have, have both. Okay. So what I'm saying, uh, I'm trying to maintain a percentage of about 40 people, 40% 40 of the people who can truly be moved from one place to another. We also have, and that, that's the bigger part of, of, of the assembly, people, uh, people who are experts in their job. Uh, I think yesterday you had the opportunity to see the ladies who are painting, lacquering. Oh yes, lacquering on the yes. edge of the lenses. They have been working 35 and the other lady 40 years doing the same do, doing thing. the same thing and they're really good at doing it and they are also much better than any automation would do it which is an, an, another topic that you would see you would see a high degree of digitalization you would see a lot of high end modern metrology stuff but you would not see automation in our assembly lines so let, let's talk a little bit about that a little bit. We were seeing lenses made earlier today, you know, the, uh, and you know, one lens at a time being ground. And I stopped by one of the individual operators and was talking to him and he had this one cool display and uh, it was showing the different tolerances of the lens uh, using color. It was kind of uh, like, you know, the radar weather map we see where you can see certain things. And he goes, this is really good. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? He says, 0. .0009. And it, it, he did it with a smile and a pride on his face. Yes. And when you and I were talking, we talked about this is where that humanization yes. part comes in. Yes. You know, you can put a piece of glass in a, in a piece of machine and a machine grinds at the tolerances, you take it out and you never look at it. But here, somebody takes it out, they look at it and they take it further if they have to. Yes. They, they're making an individual decision. Yes. Correct? That, that is correct. And you asked me earlier about how we keep people motivated. And, and I told you, there is really no, there is no other key than giving the people the full responsibility. They really feel responsible about the product. And I hope you had the, you had the, feel, uh, you had the feeling of passion well, of the people. They're proud of what they're doing. <laughs> this, this whole passion thing 
permeates you know, throughout Leica. I wasn't prepared for what I've, what I've seen since I've gotten here. I wasn't prepared and I figured I'm gonna come down and talk to you and you know, you've got everything in boxes and you're moving them all around and yeah. you know, it's a very kind of mechanical process. And then I find out it's not that mechanical process. It's you know, about the individual, it's about the talent of the individuals, but those individuals somewhere along the line find a passion in what they're doing. Even if it's just somebody that's screwing things on or the woman I took a picture of yesterday that put the red dot on at the very end. Yes. There's such pride going throughout this whole company yes. from the executives right down to that. And I, and I don't know how it works. Maybe it's a top-down thing, but in this case, if it's production, it's starting with you, because you certainly have it. You have another plant in Portugal. Tell us a little bit about what this plant does and how it interfaces with what it, it does here with the, the Wetzler operation. Yes, um, so the Wetzler operation is focused on the, on the new product developments, especially due to the proximity that we have to, to our development and engineering department. We are focusing on the most complex elements within the products and the final assembly. This is all what Wetzla does. Uh, our second facility in Portugal is larger. It has about, it's a, it has nearly 700 people in production and it's focused on volume production of mechanical elements, of optical elements and of pre-assembly. Uh, in the example of a digital M camera, uh, in Portugal we produce all the mechanical parts. They are pre-assembled they come in here and the first step in our production line in Wetzla is inserting the sensor. Okay. So the sensor gives the picture, is the most complex part of a camera. This is what's happening here. And for all these products, the final quality assurance is also done in Wetzla, obviously. So you've got a big headache in a sense. You know, I would consider it a headache and I'm, you seem to just take it as it comes. But you've got to find a way to bring all these pieces and parts in you know, to the point where they all can be put in place that the cameras can be assembled. I mean, if you're missing one thing, one mechanical thing, one circuit board, boy, you know, you're, you're down and out, aren't you? Yes, that, that is true, and, and it is a challenge. <laughs> and it is a challenge uh, particularly because uh, many, many parts that we use are being mechanical or optical or electronical are uh, at the border of what is manufacturable or possible to do. This is why um, our suppliers um, are predominantly uh, companies that we work with for many, many years. And the most important suppliers are actually part of the Leica family. Um, one important thing when you ask me about Portugal, I think one Im important item is that Portugal was founded in uh, the beginning of the 70s. So unlike uh, other uh, companies, and uh, unlike other competitors who maybe moved to the Far East uh, 20 or 15 years ago, actually we developed this tradition in Portugal more than 40 years ago. So you got a lot of experience. You get a lot of experience and it's a true asset. Yep. And, and I can see it's the asset, the way, you, you, know, I'm, you know, witnessing how it all comes together here. You know, you got a lot of people that got a lot of pride back there and you must be real happy and all your teams when they actually watch the product go out the door and know that it's affecting and, and producing some amazing photography with, with, with the tools that you guys make here. It's just amazing. How do you empower people to make these decisions? Mm -hmm. I mean, many times people always have a boss and they just want the boss to look at things, but you're allowing people anywhere along the line to you know, make a judgment call on something. And I actually watched this on the line yesterday when somebody was picking up a piece and they go, oh, this one's not, not this. okay, this one's not good, it doesn't pass. Yes. And they made it that choice right there. Yes. And you know, they picked up another piece and used it, but uh, I mean, there's some decisions where they know rather than put something bad in, you know, they're really doing a good job. Yes, so there, there are a couple, couple aspects to that. What, I, what I'm thinking of, Obviously one is a, a good technical skill set of the people who are making the decisions which has, again, we come back to the apprenticeship and we come to, back to a long on-the-job training. Um, the other aspect is that we, we truly put responsibility in the hands of the people. And they feel responsible and they know what their decision means. So in the case of the analog camera that I mentioned earlier, it's one person who does it and it's actually only one second person to at the end Looks, looks at it with a uh, four-eye yeah. principle to, to have a last check. But basically, if they would miss something, the customer would feel it. And what we tell the people, it's, it's quality first, absolutely quality first. So there is 
obviously we have um, we have economical uh, constraints, sure. but um, we don't we don't let the people feel this too much. We try to to make things more efficient by bringing in new technology, but we don't put pressure on the people uh, to reach a certain quantity. A day we really put emphasis on the quality. So you you know obviously they got to push something out the door and you know certain limits, but. You know, you, you've, you've got your goals and you're meeting them, and uh, it's interesting to see how everybody does that back there. Yes. Tommy, I gotta tell you, man, it, I've seen some operations before, I've seen manufacturing before on larger scales and even some smaller scales, but you know, you've got an operation, you number one have gotta be proud in, but you know, that pride just shows with everything that's been going on and what we've been able to witness, and it's a privilege to have had the opportunity to meet you, talk to you, see the man behind everything that's done here and I appreciate the time you've given us and the explanation you've given us and uh, I do hope we get a chance to meet again sometime and you know even look at some of these things further as uh, everything develops over the years so it's been a real privilege thank you very much thank you very much Kevin and uh, to our readers I hope you've enjoyed this segment as much as I have it's always interesting to understand what's behind the making of a fine camera and you've had the chance to see some of this in the videos that we've done. And, you know, a lot of this isn't possible without people like Tommy back there doing it. So appreciate it once again. Appreciate all of you watching. And I'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.